All right, g'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel. I have returned from Greece, and what time is it? It is time to catch up on some of the trade stuff that I missed out on the last couple of weeks. I was trying to keep up with it in between, uh, you know, double parking mojitos at uh, Paradise Beach Hotel in Mykonos. It was a great trip, great trip, still a little bit under the weather, uh, but today's video is to kind of capture some of the stuff that's happened while I was away. And it does seem, you know, the, the rumors now that, you know, the season's ended for, you know, poor. as I recorded this, 13 teams of the competition, we're starting to see, you know, formal trade requests. The listings are happening. Clubs are getting a little bit more of an idea of uh, what their list is gonna shape up uh, like next year. And uh, there's been some developments on some big stories in this and a couple of big players in this trade period already in particular. Port Adelaide and probably Sydney as well. And North Melbourne actually. And those are all teams I'm gonna cover in this video. So let's get straight into it. Okay guys, before we continue with the rest of the video, I do have an important message to share with you. As you'd know, this year, True Footy has started working with the fantasy platform called Game Day Squad. And on behalf of Game Day Squad, I have something pretty awesome to share with you. And that is, if you haven't already, that they have just launched for AFLW. That means you can start fresh with a new squad and team and again, win weekly prizes. This is your chance to get ahead of the game and make a team for the start of the brand new season. So make sure you follow the link in the description to both creating a team on Game Day Squad and signing up to the True Footy League, which is of course completely free. Let's transform women's fantasy Aussie rules into a sensational reality. All right, so the first uh, name that we're gonna cover is that of Brody Grundy. Now, the last time I talked about Brody Grundy on this channel, it was a little bit up in the air as to where he is likely to end up. It does seem like an increasingly foregone conclusion that he won't be at Melbourne next year, if you read the tea leaves correctly. And uh, the news in this space is that Port Adelaide have pulled out of the race for Brody Grundy's services, and it kind of makes sense. They've got about three other targets at the moment, which has really opened up Sydney to emerge as the front runner for his signature, obviously trying to replace Tom Hickey and find a number one ruck solution. Part of the, the story that is being reported is that uh, Sydney and Port Adelaide had two very different pitches to Brody Grundy and Port Adelaide's was very focused on the football side of things and Sydney's pitch was more so about lifestyle and opportunities outside of football and it appears that Brody Grundy's interests were more aligned with what Sydney had to offer in terms of lifestyle. So that may have been why Port Adelaide pulled out. They may have just had other needs. I mean, they're targeting so many players. I'm not really surprised they pulled out. But the long and the short of it is that Sydney is likely to be the destination for Brody Grundy this trade period. Before we get into the Port Adelaide stuff, uh, continuing on the Sydney thread, it does appear that Dylan Stevens has a requested a trade out of Sydney to a Melbourne club, and it has not been fully reported that it is North Melbourne who he's requested, but it is considered the most likely destination. Now, this hasn't come as a huge surprise. Dylan Stevens is a former top five pick and has been in and out of the side and played about 43 games for Sydney now. Pretty talented midfielder with a good left boot, originally from Victoria, but drafted out of South Australia. And he just wants more opportunity, and he's going to head to a club where that is going to present itself. And it does appear like North Melbourne have emerged as the front runner for his services as, you know, Clarkson and those guys try and improve the established player part of their list. We know they're getting a lot of access to young talent, but Dylan Stevens now is like 22. He's got 43 games of experience. Like I said, he played 13 games this year, sort of played well at the back end of the year and then wasn't selected for the elimination final. But, you know, the Swans are certainly not bereft of young talent, let alone, you know, midfield talent. And I can see Dylan Stevens going to a North Melbourne under Clarkson and really succeeding. They're going to be active this trade period. I don't think they're going to move on their draft selections. You know, they potentially have two and three in the Ben Mackay situation that hasn't really progressed but they've got a good hand at the draft table um, that what they need is established players and Zach Fisher is another player they're linked to although that still again hasn't really progressed. Now let's talk about Port Adelaide who have had three players request trades to them since I last did a trade period video. None of them were big surprises. Brennan Zerk Thatcher, Asava Radagalia and Jordan Sweet have all requested trades from their club and it does sort of foreshadow a real changing of the guard in terms of Port Adelaide's backline. Obviously you've got Aaliyah Aaliyah as, as a mainstay but they've publicly shopped around Tom Cleary who's a key defender. Tom Jonas is retiring and Scott Lysette is tipped to find a new club. So two key backs and a ruck is on the shopping list for Port Adelaide evidently. With Radagalia, I didn't expect both Radagalia and Zerk Thatcher to request trades to the power. Obviously, again, this signals a big shift in their plans for their defense, but it does appear that Geelong are pushing hard for Port Adelaide's future first, but I, I could be mistaken, but Asava didn't play the entire season in Geelong's AFL side. Like There was definitely times he was playing in the VFL, and while he's 25 and has potential to be a good lockdown defender in the right conditions, a future first round pick is a really steep price, so uh, that will be an interesting development, but Port Adelaide's hands are kind of tied. They don't enter the draft until 37 and then 43 this year. So it'll be interesting to see what kind of moves they do to accumulate the resources to get all three of these players, let alone Asava on his own. Jordan Sweet one makes sense. He is a pretty good VFL 
Ruckman, 205 centimetres that can't crack a game with the emergence of Tim English this year, and he's South Australian born, so he comes in to probably force out Scott Lysett. I don't know where Lysett ends up now, but to be honest, I could see him ending up back at West Coast given their need for a ruck. And then thirdly, yeah, Zerk Thatcher is the third player to request a trade to Port Adelaide again, another South Australian player. He was offered a three-year deal by the Dons and obviously decided to go back for family reasons, I guess. Because he's been offered a deal, Port Adelaide do need to facilitate a trade here. So it will be interesting to see what moving parts happen at Port Adelaide to accumulate the picks required. Now, Zerk Thatcher probably isn't worth a first round draft pick, but pick 37 isn't gonna cut it. So to be honest, I expect Port Adelaide to be active in terms of trying to improve their draft position and maybe, you know, some players make way out of Port Adelaide too. A couple of the other players to request trades formally. Uh, one of them is Shane McAdam out of the Adelaide Crows, a small forward who has uh, was offered a three-year deal by the Crows despite only playing a handful of games this year. Actually, when I say a handful of games, he, he played the final six games of the year and kicked uh, 11 goals in those games. So pretty handy output. But when you consider what's Adelaide's strength, it's their forward line. They've got Isaac Rankin. They've got Rochelle. Shane McAdam is probably considering how do I fit into this long term? A three-year deal is, is fairly generous considering he was a player that didn't feature in their best 22 for a large chunk of the season. And he's also 28 years old. But obviously the uh, prospect of more opportunity at the Melbourne Football Club is the temptation for him. There he is, South Australian, of course but probably sees the writing on the wall a little bit with uh, Adelaide's young small forward line. Then you've got Liam Henry has requested a trade to Victoria. And again, I say Victoria because it hasn't actually been formalized that his requested club is St Kilda. However, it is believed that his preference is to be St Kilda. So Hawthorne are apparently also interested, which is interesting as well, but St Kilda appear to be the front runner. We did see an improved year from Leon Henry. He was pick nine back in 2019. The last three of those picks, Young, Sarong and Henry. And it does appear that Peter Bell and the Fremantle Dockers are a little bit pissed about his request to leave the footy club. And understandably so, he's a next generation academy talent. They've invested a lot of time into him and Fremantle can't stop leading players. What the hell? But he's played 43 games in four seasons, much like Dylan Stevens, actually. And uh, it'll be interesting to see how his form is valued. He played 16 games this year, averaging about 20 possessions a game. For, personally, for me, you know, St. Kilda hold picks 12 and 31 in this year's draft. I'm sure Fremantle, who are pretty good trade negotiators, when you consider some of the ridiculous deals that they've managed to get done in recent times, they're going to be pushing for that pick 12 and probably some. That being said, is he worth pick 12? No, I don't think so. So I don't know how exactly how St. Kilda go about this. Maybe they split the pick, but something in between 12 and 31 is probably fair value to my eye. Then we got the Bailey Smith deal, and uh, this one is uh, one that I kind of danced around a little bit on this channel because I kind of just thought there was nothing really to it. There was a bit of talk about him going to Geelong, and I kind of made a video about surely not, but I think we can pretty much put this one to bed because his manager, Paul Connors, has said he will be at the Bulldogs next year, and he says, I feel like the more we say it, the more people just don't listen, but he'll be at the Dogs, he'll get his body right, he's been tired and sore, he'll get back, refresh, and reset. So pretty emphatic words for from his manager in Paul Connors. I think that we can sort of probably accept that Bailey Smith is going to be a Bulldog next year. Jade Gresham is another name that won't go away. And I'm surprised there's not more said about a player that I think is actually quite good. And apparently he doesn't have an offer on the table from St. Kilda. Apparently he had his exit meeting with the club this week and said that he would be spending time thinking about his future. So maybe they're just giving him space, but I would have thought he would be a bit of a priority signing for the St. Kilda footy club. He's been linked to Carlton and more recently Essendon, uh, but the waters are a little bit murky on this one. So to be honest, I think the fact that St. Kilda don't have a deal in front of him suggests that he is going to make way, um, along with Jack Billings, probably. But as to where he goes, oh, uh, Carlton seems like a good destination for him if I was choosing from his perspective, but Essendon does seem a realistic candidate. Then the Tom Dode from the Adelaide Crows stalemate seems to continue. Uh, he's a restricted free agent, of course, and the last we really heard about him was that he was weighing up a better deal from Brisbane or a deal with less security to stay at the Crows, which is his preference and he did actually say that it would be ideal to stay at the Adelaide Crows, but there appears to be a fairly big difference in between what Brisbane's offering and what the Crows are offering. I don't really have anything new to report other than the fact that Dode is running out of time to make a decision, but considering Adelaide's defensive issues at the moment in terms of personnel, I would probably just give the guy some more security. He is a pretty damn good player. And finally, James Harms has also been uh, reported on by uh, Sam McClure, cousin Sam, not really my cousin, uh, but he is apparently almost certain to leave Melbourne at the end of this season, which is now because the Demons have just been eliminated by Carlton. But according to McClure, he has been frozen out by the Ds a little bit, uh, which is probably dramatic language, but probably given the indication that he's not going to be best 22 next year and he has been courted by all of Richmond, Carlton, Essendon and Sydney. So expect 
a deal to happen for James Harms. It does seem pretty unlikely he's going to stay at the Melbourne Footy Club this year. All right, that was my rattling through of some of the trade stuff that's happened. Obviously, we got a final series to consider as well, but I'm pretty sure I'm going to be doing a weekly trade period video with all the latest trade rumors and stuff and so much to play out and we haven't even gotten to like pick swaps and stuff like that. But it's fascinating. I enjoy this time of year. Hope you guys do too. Hope you uh, subscribe to the channel if you are enjoying the content and stay tuned for more content, both about trade period, probably, probably overdue a draft video as well. And of course, covering the final series that is. But uh, thanks you guys. Appreciate your support. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.